Hey everyone, and welcome to the first quick tip tutorial of 2020. My name is Paul, and in this video I'm going to be building uh, and partly correcting uh, last month's quick tip tutorial, which was all about the file output node. Because no sooner had I put up that video that I got a very kind commenter write this. Uh, you can add inputs in the properties panel by clicking add input, so you don't have to create multiple file output nodes. This blew my mind and I thought, and I pinned this comment at the top of that video and I'm going to show you um, why this is a game changer and why this is a more useful way of using the file output node. It's got three clear advantages. Okay, number one, uh, you can add as many or as few uh, inputs into your file output node that you want to produce. Number two, you can label each of the um, inputs with a specific label which then gets transferred to that particular uh, file sequence. And number three, it all goes to a single folder. Now I'm going to show you how to set this up and why it is the more, more superior way of working with the file output node uh, than last month's. Uh, so without any further ado, let's jump into Blender and do a, uh, I guess, a take two on this. So <laughs> let's go. So I have here a slightly modified version of the uh, blend file from last month's quick tip tutorial. It's just got a couple of extra assets, including these really nice uh, street lamps. And uh, basically what I've done here is a total render. So let's just take away the backdrop so we can see the node tree and see what's going on here. Um, now, keep in mind, we are in cycles because we uh, need to use cycles to break up the image in the way that we want it. So I've got this nice blue gradient uh, sky and that's being mixed in with outputs from this input node and that's got a, just rendered a view layer called shading texture and shading texture has got a diffuse glossy emission and shadow pass as part of the render set that I want to utilize here and of course through some node setups I have composited those and in the mix I have created a second view layer called line work and this line work is only a freestyle pass, the way you do that is by making sure that in your filters you only have freestyle enabled and not surfaces or anything else and that will uh, render you out a really clean freestyle pass and then that's composited in along the way. Now this is the point at which we have to add a file output node but before we add a file output node I want you to pay attention to your output properties so I'm just going to extend this out a little bit, okay, and under output, uh, select a path for where your renders will go, all right, and so in this case, I'm going to set it to a particular um, path, and now what I'm going to do is, if I add a file output node by going shift A, output, file output, and I extend that, and let's just zoom in a little bit, you will see that the base path is the same as your output. Now, if you add a file output node and then change this output path, this will not automatically change. You'll have to manually do it. So I'm gonna click on that folder here, and uh, this is going to take us to this particular renders folder, and I'm going to add a label, city viewport, accept. Okay, and now this is going to be the folder in which it renders all of our image outputs. Now, of course, you'll see that it's only got one input um, and we need several. We don't want to duplicate this file output a lot. How do we find them? Well, thanks to the commenter, um, all we have to do is hit the N key to get our right-hand properties panel. And with our file output node selected, you will see that indeed you've got this list and it says image and just above it, it says add input. And so we can add one, two, three, four, let's add five because I think there's a few steps that I want to add along the way. Now they will call all be called image, then underscore 001, 002, and so on. But we are going to give these very specific labels depending on the step along the render that we want to render. And so the first one I want to render, of course, is this diff call over this background with an alpha. And so I'm going to uh, connect that image to the first image. And so I'm going to double click on the properties image here. I'm gonna call this 01.diffcol. 
Now, why O1? That's because each of these that I'm going to label are not necessarily going to be rendered in an order that is easy for us to decipher. And so if you have something down here that say has, starts with A, uh, that's going to be uh, showing at the top of the list uh, in our renders folder. And so uh, what we're gonna do is just add this little O1 to make sure that they're really easy to find uh, when we look in our renders folder. So the next one uh, that we wanna see is where the gloss color comes in. So we're gonna connect that to the second one and gonna call this O2 gloss. Carl. The third one, we're going to see how the shadow gets connected. So we're going to go 03 shadow. And then uh, the next step along the way is obviously a line work. So here where we've multiplied in our line work. 04 line work. And finally, the f the output with our gloss, uh, sorry, our glowing emission uh, shaders for for these street lamps. That's going to go in the last one. And I think I might have put in one too many, so this is going to be 05 total. And now I can probably delete this one, so I'm just going to hit this little X over here. And so when I hit F12 and do a render, what we're going to get is each of these rendered out, stuck in a folder called City Viewport. And if these were animations, they would basically be called uh, 01.difcol underscore triple O one right through to however many frames we've got of that render. And then the second one will be rendered in the third and the fourth and the fifth. And so this is what it looks like. So let's just go to our renders folder. There's our city viewport folder. And because I've only rendered one frame, you can see that indeed here are our renders and this is what they look like. So here's the first one and you can see that that's just the div call with the sky. The next one along has got our gloss color over the top. The next one over has got our shadow pass and then our line pass and our final render with all the glowing emission from these lovely new street lamps. And that's pretty much it. And so you'll find these uh, working files and finished files in uh, a link in the, the description below the YouTube video. So you can uh, dissect these, you can uh, see the model, you can do your own renders, your own animation, and, uh, and use this uh, technique for your own purposes. So thanks again for that comment. Uh, it was extremely helpful. Uh, I learned a lot and I'm hoping that this is a really ideal and streamlined way of working with the file output node. So I hope you got a lot out of that video tutorial on uh, the file output node using multiple inputs to get um, render passes out of Blender. Now, of course, if you like what you saw today and you want to see future videos, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you're feeling at all generous, you can join the ranks of my Patreon supporters over on my Patreon page. A link will be provided in the notes below. Their generous support each month is what makes the production of these videos possible. And thirdly, if you have a comment or suggestion, feel free to put it in the comment section below this video. I'm always open to learning new and better ways of, of using the stuff that I uh, you know, uh, put out here on YouTube. It only um, makes the video's quality uh, that much better uh, down the line. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.